So, I'm going to review ankle fractures and syndesmotic injuries here. We didn't really talk about it too much in the PowerPoint sessions. Um, it's a huge topic. Uh, you know, it's important. That is, it's it's uh, ankle fractures are really are really common. Um, you should definitely leave residency being very comfortable with these. Many of you will have to treat these in your practice as opposed to nasty pilon fractures, which you may not have to. So you really should know these inside and out. Okay. Um, I focus more time in the in the PowerPoints uh, that uh, we did on the pilon fractures. Maybe we'll come back and do another PowerPoint for ankle fractures and syndesmotic injuries. But um, do review it. Go through the book chapter. Um, we'll we'll hit some of the high points here in this uh, uh, review. So. Um, here you can see a nice example of a stress view, right? So here you can see the, uh, the uh, surgeon has got uh, the lead gloves on. There's an external rotation stress being done here, and you can see there's widening of the medial clear space, widening of the syndesmosis, right? So this is a patient who had a, who had a uh, distal fibula fracture, and um, you can see that there's been... Um, so here's a distal fibula fracture right here, and you can see that... Uh, to sort of better understand the degree of ligament injury, a stress view was done. Okay, right on the header page. Blisters, unfortunately, are uh, something that uh, you will get just like with pilon fractures. So you have to come up with a method. Are you going to leave them alone? Are you going to unroof them and do dressing changes? Uh, just beware that uh, they can lead to wound complications. Hemorrhagic blisters are a little bit more risky. Uh, here's that example of st stress view. So here you can have you know, fibula fracture. Doesn't look too bad on that view. Stress view, everything widens, right? So that patient might might benefit from ORAF if you want to treat it aggressively. Uh, after ORAF, you stress it again. Syndesmosis still widens with stress view. You put a syndesmotic screw in. Okay. Understand the basic uh, log Hansen classification, uh, mechanistic classification. It gets challenged all the time, but you know it's 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 a, it's a communication thing. Surgeons use it to communicate. You should understand it um, pretty thoroughly. So hopefully you're familiar with that. This kind of reviews it here. Um, the AO and sort of Weber classification use the level of the fibula fracture, right? So this is also used a lot. So you absolutely have to know this too. Is it a Weber A uh, distal fibula? Is it um, fracture at the level of syndesmosis, or is it Weber C, which is way up here? And the Weber Cs are more likely to have syndesmotic injury. Okay. Um, other than the external rotation stress test, you can also do a so-called cotton test, right? So you fix the fractures, you pull on the fibula, and see if this medial clear space here widens, right? And if it widens, then that's a positive cotton test. Know, the medial clear space and the whole talus can come over and the medial clear space here can widen as well okay and that's you know cotton test done intraoperatively under fluoro um, you know open ankle injuries do happen typically the you know tibia is what comes through the skin here you can see extremely heavy patient open tibia fracture you know in some nasty cases like this you may have to consider going in and you know, doing an external fixation, you know, until things calm down, and then, you know, if you have to go back and uh, repairing the medial and lateral malleolus, in, in this case, you can see while there was an opportunity, uh, screws were put in, uh, and uh, external fixation was done. Now, uh, I think this is nice. This kind of just shows one other technique. Keep in mind, sometimes these medial mal fractures are small, right? We always try to put in two cannulated screws religiously. But if you think about it, I mean, fix it the way you have to fix it. Make sure it's stable fixation. But if it's not going to fit two screws, do one screw or do a couple of wires in a tension band or something, or do what you have to to get stable fixation without blowing it up and, you know, have, and, 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 you know, you want to have x-rays that, that, that uh, you can feel comfortable with, and it doesn't mean you have to do the exact same fixation for every single one, okay? So you do what's needed for that particular fracture, right? So in this case, K wires, possibly a tension band were used. Um, uh, looks like there's a uh, screw here. 
I wonder if some kind of suture or something was used uh, tied around the suture and washer and then around the ends of the pins. Okay, because I, I think it may be suture because I don't see it, but you can also use like a thin gauge stainless steel wire if you're going to do it that way. Okay, and this is a posterior pleating of the tibia and fibula um, that was done for this particular injury. And we, we saw this in the last chapter as well. Okay, the dime sign, right? D I M E, dime sign, right? So this is this is something that when you get a reduction, this is not a great picture to show this, but when you get a, a reduction or you're looking at an x-ray and you want to know if the fibula is out to length, you should be sort of able to draw this circle, right, from the tip of the fibula and then along the, 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 the this radiographic shadow in here and this potentially you can imagine a dime fitting right in there and that's called the dime sign, okay, it tells you if you have your fibular length. Another method is to look at talocrural angle, and this has to be compared to the contralateral sides. You assume the contralateral ankle is normal for that patient. You measure this angle, and then if it's, you know, the angle is too small, that means the fibula might be short. Okay, that's a that's a problem that happens more often than you than you think. Okay. Um, alternative fixation of the uh, fibula shown here, right? So you have the tension. Uh, failure on the fibula, big shearing injury here, so this may need to be, this is a supination adduction type injury, right? Now remember, you may have some plafond impaction in here too, so you have to open these anteromedially, get in there, identify, address any impaction anteromedially, and then oftentimes put some type of small buttress plate on here, uh, screws going perpendicular to that vertical fracture line and across. Um, and then you can just plate the fibula, in this case they decided to fix it with this screw, which is probably fine if you have good cor cortical contact. Um, posterior malleolar fractures can be fixed anterior to posterior. If they're big fragments, if they're smaller fragments, probably should be fixed from posterior to anterior. Okay, and those can be fixed through the posterior lateral approach. Um, Masonuf type injuries where you don't have any medial fracture but you have a widened syndesmosis can be fixed with syndesmotic screws alone. You don't have to do this uh, uh, plate. You could just use washers if you want. Some people like to just expose it, use a small little plate as a washer uh, and put two screws in. Um, one way to one way to do it. Um, these are not without complications, right? So the distal tibia, unfortunately, distal tibia and fibula, uh, the ankle, I mean, these are fractures that, you know, pleading a fibula is not benign. I mean, you can get into trouble with these. They can pus out. Wounds break down. You have plate right under the skin with poor soft tissue coverage and in some patients poor, poor circulation. So uh, you've got to be real careful. Um, sometimes if you have open fractures here, a good case to put in instrumentary fixation or use external fixation. Okay, uh, non-unions of the medial malleolus will occur. Here you can see maybe inadequate fixation, small thing. Again, all these fractures can't necessarily be fixed with two screws. Sometimes you got to do something different. Here you can see is a hook plate used to revise this K wire. Sometimes it's got to be tension banded. Um, so here's a patient, uh, you know, poor bone maybe ambulating on it early, um, collapse, complete loss of alignment, uh, destruction of the articular surface, loosening the screws, patient's probably diabetic, uh, loss of reduction here. So this particular case presenting late was really, you know, this ended up just taking everything out. You can see a biopsy being done to make sure something wasn't infected. And this goes on to actually getting fused, um, you know, with, uh, compression technique and uh, you know, fusion of the ankle. Okay, so um, you know you saw some tough cases there, but remember back to what I said in the beginning, ankle fractures, malleolar ankle fractures, you should be real comfortable with these. Okay, so um, want to make sure you understand the basic principles, you know, um, prepare for, uh, you know, read the chapter, uh, go through some questions, but we'll, we'll review all this stuff in uh, trauma conference. Thanks.